Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we continue training the Manchester University Wasp Survey Team on August 22, 2023, as they remove an underground wasp nest filled with aggressive eastern yellow jackets that ended up stinging two of our team members. Despite the stings, the team kept putting in work and did an exceptional job. They were able to collect all the live adult wasp specimens for venom immunotherapy, or VIT, and capture the queen, and then relocate the brood comb into captivity where the pupae can be raised until ready for VIT collection. We'll show you the entire nest removal process step by step, so kick back and enjoy the show. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment so we can continue bringing you quality content throughout this year's wasp season and beyond. Thanks for riding along with us. Now we'll go to August 22nd, 2023, when this job began. August 22nd, 2023. Libby's taking a sample specimen here. She's going to gas it real quick so we can get some imagery to do a specimen ID. Let's have you step away from here while you do that. Keeps from stirring them up. Whenever it's down, bring it on over, we'll take a look. All right, look good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's get a good close-up on this one. We're gonna have you work the scope cam because that'll help get them going. Here they come. What we're gonna do, guys, is uh, do the usual rain dance to stomp them out. And we'll watch them coming out. And be ready for that because they're gonna come out pretty quick once we get stomping. So, maybe when you're ready, stomp on both sides of this and we'll get them coming out. Keep it right there. Keep going, Libby. It's working great. See him on the screen? Keep it up. Just keep going. We'll keep going as long as they're coming out. Keep it right there, Regan. Start them up, doing great. Perfect. Trey, grab the scope cam, will you? Going, Libby, you get tired, you take a break, but otherwise, it's working great. Take a break on that for a second, we'll see how we're doing. I'll be on photo mode first, so you want to change it by hitting the M button for video mode. It's just one click. Uh, and then to put it into record, you're going to want to press this button right over here next to the sunshine button. And the sunshine button will turn on the light. Right there, we get it. Uh, I'm 
need to know about the cookbook. Okay, we're good. Sure. Alright. Stick it in there. So, yep, what you're going to do is gently probe the opening of the tunnel. And you're going to try to get focused imagery. So the main thing here is uh, do your best to get focused. First of all, you check to see what lens is on. The light is on the end. Go ahead. Send it right down there. And they'll start attacking that. But do your best to find where, where they're coming from. I'd like to see them coming up through the hole. Is that paper right there, there already? Or is that wood or paper? Uh, yeah. Try to cross the top. Do what you can to stir them up and get good imagery of them coming up. Try to pull back and get right focus and all that. Right. There's a rock there. Got a rock, okay. And in between here is where they're coming up between that rock. Okay, great. Um, below. Go a little deeper, see what you can find. The, I think the rocks are getting in the way. Um, closer. Um, I don't see any this visible looks a little bit like paper. It could be paper. Uh, it could be, but I also know from... It could be a rock, yeah. I also know that from the way when we were looking at the hole exposed without anything else, there's a bunch of rocks in that okay. location. Okay. Yeah, they might cover sometimes the whole area with paper. But see if you can find a nest anywhere. Um, it's unlikely you'll be able to catch it from the tunnel, but sometimes you'll be lucky. Feel, feel free to play around with the angle of the camera, do the side, side angle, do the front angle, whatever you need. So Libby's using the scope camera on the nest just to kind of get an idea of what is coming up out of there and where the tunnel may lead. <laughs> Tell it's coming from underneath that rock. Okay, cool. Oh, well, actually, you're right. You're right. No, 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 no. This is totally the side of the. Look at that. I think you're right. They're coming right out of that hole. It's right, actually, right against the the surface. I think it's. Yeah, I can't really tell. I think the. Yeah, I think it's it's right underneath 
see these two rocks right here? Yeah, There's yeah. a layer of dirt. I think it's right underneath there. Alright, cool. Yeah, good. Go back just a little bit and then go slowly until you get good focus down here. I want to see that coming up out of the area. Now we're going to give it a good stomp out, but I want to watch it come running out here, right there. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, they're all going in and out. Trey is stomping them out to stir them up, and the vacs are pulling them out as that occurs. How's the activity level down there? Really high. Okay, good. Keep it up, Trey. You're doing great. I see a mess coming up. See much else near the surface. Is it down here where you're seeing it? Yeah, right in there. Yep. Got paper? No. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little paper there. Right here, huh? So this is where we're going to go with the hole. Let me dig a little bit further back there. Trey, go ahead with the trowel. Try to get right around there. I'm going to block the... Uh... Well, there you go. Yeah. 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 Ye
There you go, there's the nest. Great. So real gently around that nest tray, try to try to give us the whole circumference of it by just digging around it. And just be ready to jump on that back. If we suddenly hit something that comes uh, with a lot of population coming up. This is like very loamy, like. Ooh. You got one in your hand. I got it. Step back and get zipped up, no worries. Well, see, she's gonna keep coming unzipped, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a never ending fight, right? Yeah, sure. So, I'm almost debating just saying, eh, I want to duct tape off, you can. I know. Alright, yeah. looking pretty good. I think we're finding the edge of it here. So, as you see any land on tray or as gloves or anywhere, and go ahead and just take them right off his body. I mean, honestly, I think this is the circumference of... Okay, let's clear some of the area around the circumference, and we'll try to get this three-dimensional out. It's pretty shaky right now. Like, if I, I think I could just pull it out. As is. Okay, let's not do that quite yet. I'm going to grab the containers for that. The containers are over there. Great. I want to see how much of this cavity space we can clear. Well, there's a big root right here, so that's nice. I think I'm at the beach. The more sand I pull out, the more comes in. Yeah, eventually it clears out. If you need root cutters, just grab them. They're uh, in this tool bucket. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Not a super high population nest yet. A lot of them might be out foraging and stuff. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I reached the uh, bench right yeah, I can see it starting to form up. So what we want to see is that ball shape with as much of the original paper on it as we can. And then we'll try to lift the entire nest out whole once you have access for that. So here Trey is digging around the perimeter of the nest and the reason for that is we like to see the entire circumference of the nest and we like to try to bring it out in one piece and finding the circumference edges of the nest helps us do that. Watch your noses and chins against your bales guys. 
Cause they'll get you if you're making contact with your veil. They won't catch you slacking, I can confirm. Yeah. Unfortunately. If you want to come around this side and go right over the stump. That's one of my legs. Get it right off your leg, swipe it, because it can sting you right through your fabric wherever you have a tight skin against tight fabric. Yeah, it looks great, Trek. Whenever you feel like you have enough access to get underneath it, and pull the whole thing, we'll do that. Just tell us before you do it so we can bring the container. I mean... You just about ready? Yeah, I feel okay. like Let's grab it. Now you can use the tongs if you want to keep your hands from getting so many stings. Um, sometimes that can help. Well, uh, otherwise you just grab it. it. No stings on the hands yet, so I'm going to be pretty confident about that. But... Okay. Try to get the whole thing out in one chunk, and we'll set it right in here. There you go. Good. Now let them run until they're clear, so you don't get the green. That's another pancake, looks like, so maybe that's another comb about the size of a small saucer. Got a fish. What you're looking at there, Libby, is the back of a brood comb. Okay. It's as hard as cardboard. And Trey will dig around that and try to lift it out here in a sec. What we have here is active larva and active pupa, which are the white silk caps. And Libby's going in there trying to find any of the adults that are on the top of the nest, which is this part. Yeah. Hey, James, can I have the bucket back? Oh, sorry, man. Very good. Very good. Great. All right, there's one of that good chunk of the nest. Looks great. The next one will set in this one, Trey. Okay, we'll have to root. I might get that out. That one's going to be a little bigger. And there'll be a couple underneath that from the look of that. Oh, we're pulling up this head. Regan, if you want to cap off for a second, save your fat, that'll be fine. Um. You've got an assassin bug on your left. You and your assassin bugs, look at that. They love to road out at the Meridian address, it's, um, too. Is that your left leg right there, right on the outside? They landed right on Regan last time. Uh, you want to do 360? No. Nope. Nope. Look at that. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Hold that into my hand, there. Yeah, suck them right off your glove before they have a chance to sink a stinger. Size brood comb right there. So, Libby, what you see on these ground nests is they support the whole structure through root comb, just like bald face will do in trees with, with branches. Yeah. So, they'll run right through the middle of the nest often. All right, you gonna come out now? Yeah, I got a double come here. Yeah, great. Pull them right out. Be gentle with the brood. And try to set it down so we can see the upside of the queen. Flip it right over there. Go. Go ahead, Libby. Get the queen. She's right here. Where is she? Right here. here. Got her? I got a couple of Make sure you get her. She's the priority of the queen. 
Get it? Oh, wait, no. Just step back side there. You can separate. Calm. I think it's probably going to be better because we're dealing with a thousand things at the same time. Yeah, I know. Take a minute and see if you can find a clean. We also have a good amount of debris, so it's like really hard to see. Yeah, I think it's a good amount of debris, so it's like really hard to see. Come on over here, start sucking up these guys. How'd you do? How you doing, Libby? Good. Oh, cool. But that looks like you got most of the adults in there. Uh, we'll cap that one off. This container, that is. We've got a lot. I've been looking, and there's a bunch of people trying to hatch at the same time. All right, let's go ahead and close it up then. Well, you take care of these guys. All right, Libby, toughest kid on the block here. She uh, just took a sting to the ankle, and I'm going to interview you about that experience. For other people who end up on this team over the years, yeah. if that occurs, what is it like? What's the pain level, 1 to 10? What wow. happens when you use the extractor, that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, pain level. initial pain level is probably an 8 or a 9, but um, over time it, start, it goes away, especially probably after a couple of minutes. Um, the extractor pinches, but is helpful, and then it turns into adult pain that's probably about a one or a two. Okay, that's where you're at now is a one or a two, and it's been how long, you think? Uh, probably, oh gosh, another one. Uh, probably, I don't know, five minutes? Hasn't okay. Been All right, good. Thanks. Of course. Way to get back in the game. All right, so how are we doing over here on the swarm? How's it look for the swarm so far? It's going down a little bit? Yeah, way down. Let's see what we have in the containers. Let's lift this one up for a sec. Okay. Not a huge population there yet. Oops. Let's check this out. Trey, give that a really good look. See if you can find a queen, will you? We saw her for sure, but I'd, be, I'd hate to think we missed her, but we may have. Yeah, there's our queen. The queen is the very large one in the center of the frame, and she's trying to hide herself. That's what she's supposed to do when there's a threat, so she'll go climbing underneath stuff. Great. Thanks, guys. So we've got the entire nest out. The brood has been contained in these two containers, and we have the queen, so the nest will not rebuild here. This was a one, two, three, four-layer nest. And what Libby is doing is sifting out the dirt in the bottom of the hole to get the last of the foragers. And now we'll just stand by and vacuum up the few that are coming back from foraging. So let's get the spray out, Libby, and we're going to do the same thing we did before. That's it. Hey, here's one right on my veil, Trey. There you go. Whenever they land, just hit them. They seem to like me. Oh, it was me earlier. Okay. 
August 22nd, 2023. Regan did a great job on this collection. We've got about half of them here, and the other half are in the back over here. These are Best Vila Macula fronds. And what we're doing is we're disguising the collection container and putting the hole of the vac where the hole of the nest used to be. So hopefully they'll come and explore that hole and suck themselves up. The last of the forages. All right, so today these guys are taking a break while we finish up the last of the foragers who are returning uh, into our disguised vacuum here. Are you seeing them go into the hole pretty routinely? Yeah. All right, perfect. So Trey took a sting today and so did Libby. Uh, Regan got lucky, she did not take a sting. But uh, why don't you tell us what that was like, how it happened and what was the pain level like and when did it dissipate? Well, considering this is my fourth sting, I'm a bit of an expert on the uh but uh, realistically, it only lasted for maybe five minutes in total, just the hurt and the pain. And even then, it was more like getting a needle in your wrist. Okay. And then having it taken out, easy peasy, doesn't really stick around. And when you first take the sting, what's the pain level one to ten? Ten being like unbearable, one being barely anything. It's about a one. It's about a one on this one. one. Was pretty pretty minor. It's not. It's nothing. It was on your hand. Yeah, okay. It's pretty much gone now, so. All right, great. great. Thanks. Okay. So the last of the foragers are still out here looking for their former home, and they are confused and can't find it. Uh, their pheromone has been blocked with some of the oil. So it looks like our disguised vac has gotten some of the foragers collected. They still keep going into the hole, which is good. So. I'm going to stay here and let this run for about an hour. If you guys want to take off and go for it, I'm just going to collect as many as we can because we got kind of a late start on this one, so there's going to be a lot of foragers coming back. There's no reason for you guys to stare at the hole for an hour. So uh, why don't we call it for today? Uh, Conquered her first ground nest. Well done. It took one sting in the process and came back swinging, so good job. We appreciate that. Same with you, Trey. Took one in the hand. Didn't slow him down for a minute. You guys just kept it up. Well done. So the Maculifrons nest we took out today, uh, we got the entire nest, we got the queen, we got all the foragers we could find. Good job, thanks Regan. Everybody, good work. So here we're just allowing the vac to collect foragers that return. These foragers were out all morning collecting sap or nectar or hunting for insects for the nest, or collecting wood for the fiber they use to build the nest. And as they come back, we've changed their nest orientation visually, because obviously we dug it up, the nest has now been removed. So as they come back, they're a little confused and they sort of hover around the area looking for their way back home. And what we're doing here is just collecting them as they come back. And as you see here, the hole we've created in the center of what used to be their nest area is disguised and we do this because they will naturally explore a dark hole that used to be right where their front door was and when they do that we can capture them easily and we kind of disguise it in greenery so that it's less of a visual distraction for them and they'll come in and take a look at that hole and as soon as they do that they get collected August 22nd, 2023. Here we have the Maculifrons nest that we just took out of the ground by the stump. Very active collection. These will be used for venom immunotherapy. We have the queen in here, as well as all of the workers we could find. You can hear them. Very active. So that's it for this episode. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.